For many of Apple's computers, the base configurations feature 8 gigabytes of memory and 256 gigs of storage. Is that enough? If you're about to buy an Apple computer, what minimum spec should you be looking for? Well, this video is intended to help customers who are looking at machines like the MacBook Air, the iMac, and the Mac Mini, those featuring the standard M series chips. If you're looking at a Pro, Max, or Ultra chip, then the base specs will be different, but the principles I'm about to share still apply. And of course, you can find a great variety of opinions on YouTube when it comes to this topic, so why should you listen to mine? Valid question. Well, aside from running this channel, I'm a co-owner of a digital agency, which employs around 40 staff, all of whom are using Apple computers. Our admin team are working on MacBook Airs with eight gigs of memory. Our dev team are using MacBook Pros with at least 16 gigs, and our video editors have a minimum of 32 gigs. And I guess we've probably had over 60 of these Apple Silicon Macs now, M1, M2, M3, uh, Pro chips, Max chips, a variety of memory and storage configurations, and I've personally got to test a lot of those machines in depth. So I'm sharing real world knowledge with you based on actual hands-on experience with these machines in a real commercial environment. At the end of the day though, this is just my opinion and your mileage may vary. All of us have unique workflows and unique ways that we use our computers, but hopefully the principles in this video will be helpful to you in choosing your new Mac. The first thing you need to bear in mind is that the memory and the SSD storage in these computers are not user replaceable. They're soldered to the logic board, so it's really important that you get that right at the time of purchase. You need to consider your needs right now, but also think about how long you intend to keep your computer and what your needs might be during that time. And if you're someone who likes to sell and upgrade somewhere down the line, you might also want to consider what will make your computer more saleable to a prospective buyer in the future. So let's start with system RAM or memory. In an Apple Silicon computer, this memory is shared by all the different processors on the chip, not just the central processing unit or CPU. It's also going to be used by the graphics processing unit or GPU. And then we have a neural processing unit or NPU, and this handles machine learning and artificial intelligence tasks. Apple calls theirs the neural engine, these things are becoming increasingly important to modern operating systems. And in addition to that, we've also got dedicated engines for speeding up video playback and rendering, handling audio, security, image processing. All of these tools on that chip access that same memory. And arguably, things have changed since Apple first launched its M1 computers. Even then, eight gigabytes wasn't exactly a huge amount of memory, but it was enough for general day-to-day -day computing writing documents, editing spreadsheets, email, web browsing, watching videos. And in fact, thanks to some clever memory management, those eight gig machines seem to be able to do plenty more besides that. You'll recall that I said the admin team at our digital agency are using eight gigabyte MacBook Airs, and I've never heard any complaints about running out of memory. Uh, that wasn't true of the previous generation Intel MacBook Airs with eight gigabytes. So these new Apple Silicon machines do seem to be able to punch above their weight when it comes to memory specification. But at the end of the day, eight gigabytes is still eight gigabytes. And I've always recommended upgrading to 16 gigs if you're planning to use your Apple computer beyond those basic day-to-day -day computing tasks. And now with the continued rise of on-device AI tasks and the increase in performance of the CPU, GPU, and NPUs on the latest M chips, we've arrived at the point where eight gigabytes of memory isn't really suitable for basic computing anymore. Yes, it still works at the moment, but the next version of macOS is going to introduce even more AI workloads, and the demands on your computer's resources are only heading in one direction. Apple has now released the next generation M4 chip. Uh, that's available in the iPad Pro at the moment, and it will come to the Mac probably later in 2024. And those Macs may come with a 12 gigabyte memory option hopefully doing away with that eight gigabyte base specification. If that is the case, 12 gigs will become the new minimum requirement for the general computing use case, in my opinion. And I'll probably start recommending 24 gigs for those who want to do heavier graphics or CPU intensive workloads. Again, you need to think about the life cycle of your computer. Your needs in three years time may be very different to now, or it may well be the case that the software you're using or the operating system increasingly becomes more demanding. So you need to consider future-proofing your purchase. With some of the previous generations of these machines, you could always go and buy more memory later. But remember, 
that's not an option anymore. Let's talk about storage now. 256 gigabytes, well that may well be enough storage for basic computing, but there's more to consider. These are SSDs, and SSDs wear out. Did you know that every time you write data to your SSD, it wears just a little bit? SSDs have a finite amount of data that can be written to them before they fail. There's no need to panic though, because for the vast majority of users, the SSD in your Mac will last just fine. It'll probably outlast the useful life of the computer. There's extra space built in for replacing these cells as they wear out, and the wear limits are pretty huge. They're measured in terabytes written, or TBW. And in fact, you can write hundreds of terabytes, if not thousands, to your drive before it hits that failure point, depending on how large the drive is. Of course, none of this changes the fact that if your SSD does fail for any reason at all, it's soldered to the logic board. So you'll be losing any data you haven't backed up and your computer will be going back to Apple for repair. So here are some things to bear in mind when choosing your storage. Larger drives are generally faster, although outside of benchmarks, you might not notice the performance difference in real-world usage. But also, a larger drive can take more of those data writes before it wears out. Double the size of the storage, and the TBW value also doubles. SSDs will slow down when they get filled closer to capacity, so you need to allow some headroom on the drive to give you optimum performance. And that means that you'll need to spec more storage space than you think you need. And what you think you need today could be very different to what you actually need in three years time. And finally, you need to be aware of memory swapping, something all computers do. If you run short on memory, the system will move any unused memory temporarily to your SSD and swap it back when it needs to. Mac OS is really good at this, and in many cases, you won't even notice that it's happening. But when memory pressure is increased, it can cause system slowdowns, especially on models with the smallest and slowest SSDs, i.e. those with 256 gigabytes. So based on all of these things, it's reasonable to conclude that 256 gigs is probably not enough for most use cases. So I would recommend 512 as a minimum, and the sweet spot is probably one terabyte, unless you've got very specific needs. And I say that because Apple's SSD upgrade prices are brutal, and going for the largest drive options will seriously increase the price of what is already an expensive computer. So instead, why not consider augmenting the internal storage with cost-effective external storage? These Samsung T7 USB drives are a really good example of this. Performance is excellent, we use them for video editing purposes, but they're fast enough for pretty much any task, and they don't take up much space in your bag or your desk drawer. You can share them between multiple computers, Mac and PC, and you'll have a huge saving over Apple's internal storage prices. Now, I'm not sponsored by Samsung at all here. These are drives that we've bought with our own money, and we've just had a really good experience with them, so I find I can recommend them. So I'm going to pop some links in the description to these drives on Amazon. If you do buy one or anything else on Amazon using our links, then the channel earns a small commission, which really helps us, but it doesn't cost you any extra. So thanks in advance for your support there. So how do we sum up? Well, maybe you're looking for just the cheapest Mac option, a computer that you don't intend to do much with or you don't intend to keep it that long. In which case, by all means, go and buy the base configuration with eight gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. But if that's not the case, you really need to carefully consider the upgrade options. Now, at the moment, upgrading one step on the memory, and you've got to choose 16 gigs on the current models because there's no 12 gig option yet, and going up one step on the SSD is going to add $400 or 400 pounds to your purchase price. And that is not an insignificant amount of money, but you will be getting a far more competent machine that's going to last you longer. And that's really important in an age where computers seem to be becoming a non-upgradable commodity, much like our smartphones. So I hope this information was helpful to you. Uh, please leave a comment if you've got any questions, and I'll do my best to answer as many of those as I can. And if you want to learn more about tech, why not consider subscribing to the channel? Thanks for all your support. See you again soon for some more geekery.